Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about the updates that I've done to my i3 configuration. I like i3. I've used it a lot. It was the second window manager I've ever used. Um, a couple reasons why I wanted to spruce this up and, and, and get it working is I wanted to start using it again. Um, I like polybar, you know, so it's a polybar setup. Basically, it's set up the same way that I set everything up. You know what I mean? 70% opacity, black background. The reason why I do that is basically I can use any, mostly any wallpaper and it's going to look good. You know what I mean? So that's why I always use like that black theming. It, it, it just, it's very universal. So, um, yeah, I, I, I found a few new things. I've changed some things around, uh, to be real, I don't really use Polybar uh, all the time. Most of the time, I like it's not even in my startup. I just run it without a bar. But it's nice to have, you know, if I need to get up here and mess around in the tray or whatever. So I guess we can just pop over into uh, my little config. Let's see, I3 right here. Okay. <clears throat> so let's just start running down things. All right. Obviously, the, your typical stuff, your, you know, you set your mod key, your font. Um, this right here, it, uh, this takes away all the window decorations. I'm a fan of the, you know, the borderless sort of stuff. It, it looks nice. It, you know, with the gaps uh, taking up a little bit of the screen space, it gives you a little bit back not having the window decorations. It's, it's pretty nice, you know. Um, this is all pretty much typical stuff you know I'm using auto tiling as one does like such um, because the column view eh, I don't really like it the column layout um, this is like desktop entry crap XFC pull kit you know if I need a GUI to pop in and type a password for something you know there you go got that danced on the notifications all this stuff is very stereotypical Redshift, a little blue light filter. Pycom, I'll talk about Pycom for a second. So for a long time, I was using um, the FT Labs Pycom fork, which is very good. Uh, it, it kind of emulates some of those like smooth animations that you'd see from Hyperland or Mango and other things like that. Uh, I was having a little bit of issues running games. So I would be in something that might take up a little bit of resources, you know, maybe like Rust or something like that. And when I would switch into another workspace and open up a couple of windows, I noticed that the animations were pretty stuttery. And I don't know, I got kind of sick of that. Uh, uh, so I just kind of put in the normal PyCom and now it's fine. Works fine, you know? Uh, FabBG thing, this is just set in the wallpaper. This is generated by the FabBG command. Like, I use uh, fab-bg-fill, and then path to an image, and then you get this, right? So, and I have a couple different ways of switching the wallpaper if I like. Um, Alt-Tab is a new addition to my Xorg setup. So, basically, I'm an Alt-Tabber. You know, uh, LabWC, Awesome WM, they have their own kind of window switcher built in. Uh, I really like them, and I wanted something equally as lightweight, and I searched around uh, for like, I don't know, a couple nights, and I came across this Alt-Tab thing, and it works really good. And so the cool thing about it is it executes as a command kind of similar to uh, D menu. So all your theming is just kind of built into the command. So as I3 starts, it will start this as a daemon in the background, and then it gives me the ability to have this kind of menu thing. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. I don't know why I have an extra thingy. Whatever. Oh, I know why. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, if we come back in here, um, I'm starting up kitty with tmux and uh funny thing this dash a flag i i for whatever reason i, I skipped over it and when i was reading the documentation and nothing i didn't realize but what that does is if you already have a session running it just will attach the session instead of trying to create a new one so that's pretty cool um you know if you're just working on things or maybe you log out and then log back in you'll still have your session going which is nice and then vest top and then Firefox. So all three of these start up as i3 starts. And I have a couple of window class things. So Vestop, and then when I have this one for this like Runelight private server thing I've been playing. 
but basically this will open on two and that'll open on four with vest top the reason why you got to do this is if you want vest top to auto start um you can't set it up so this is another way to do it you see this like workspace three execute fire box and then stay on workspace one or whatever that's one way to do it but vest top doesn't respect that right so you have to actually assign a, cl a, a class to it and have it only open and i only want it on workspace two so that's how i got there it was just pretty cool um then we move into this so this is something uh, right here, this little block, what this does is it gives me, like, mouse keys. Um, so, I was looking around for, I'm like, oh, I want to be able to, like, do some things. I did a little experimentation with XDo Tool. I was using the volume knob on my keyboard uh, to scroll with. And then when you press the volume knob, I was using it as the back button. So I, I could, like, scroll around on web pages with it. And I don't know, it kind of, it was kind of janky and didn't work great. And I would have to execute the xdo tool command like three times because it would, it would be such small increments. And I don't know, it just kind of binded up and got weird. So I, I, I found this Reddit post and, and I was scrolling down and this is the original keybind setup, mode setup that uh, I was looking at. And I just kind of edited it a little so it was a little cleaner and... With this, uh, I had to add this no startup ID thing, because if you don't do that and you, like, switch to another desktop, your mouse cursor will be, like, on the infinite loading thing until you load something new. So if you have this, it doesn't do that. And, and yeah. So, yeah, so the way this kind of works is, uh, let's say I do, uh, control, what is it, mod C, and I go into the mode. Now I can use the arrow buttons to move this around. And if I do shift, it'll do a smaller increment, right? And then, so if I go uh, shift space, that will uh, right click. And then, for instance, uh, like I want to take a screenshot, shift T. And then I can go into here, save pull, full page, and then, you know, download, blah, blah, blah. Sure, we'll do this. And then now I take in a whole screenshot of that. And, uh, yeah, and then you press escape and it, and it moves out and you can use your keyboard normally again. So, yeah, so... Mod C. It, it's okay. I don't use it a ton, but it does come in handy when I'm like really in keyboard mode and I don't want to be using the mouse. I, I like it a lot. So yeah, that's what that is. You know, we move down. This is normal workspace stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know, normal navigation stuff. So I basically have like focus switching on alt and the arrow keys, but I also have focus switching on HJKL and uh, super. You know, because sometimes I use both. I'm, I'm weird like that. All right. So there's some stuff like uh, the resize, keybinds. This is like a, just a more simplified version. Normally they have like a resize mode where you go super R and then it has like different keybinds associated with it. But this is just right here. This uh, block is, this is just a way simpler way to do it. You know what I mean? So if I'm going in here, I could be like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Works pretty good. You come down here, you got your gaps. I don't really ever use this. Ooh, I got an extra spot in here. You know, I'm using Alt-M and Alt-N to, like, uh, do my volume. You know, here's some more, like, default uh, sort of uh, i3 stuff right here. And then if we come down in here, this is, like, kind of, like, my user set keybinds. Like, stuff, I you know, Kitty, you know, opening up Yazi. Um, this is like real stereotypical stuff for me. Obviously, I'm on Rofi. I am going to be like moving to something different than Rofi soon because I don't know, I'm getting kind of bored of it. Uh, yeah. Firefox. And then this is how I open that RuneScape private server thing because it, it, it's, a, it's a jar file. So if you have like open JDK or whatever, like the, the open source Java thing, uh, any of these jar files, if you right click on it inside of like a file manager or something, it'll give you the option to open that. Well, like this is just kind of like the command to do the same thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And the search menu, all this sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. And then I got this little keybind. Um, this is just to, you know, basically randomize the wallpaper. And I can just like, I don't know, go until I find something that I'm feeling at the time. You know what I mean? Like. It's uh, very simple, very straightforward, very quick, very nice. 
I like doing it. It's addicting because it's like, oh, what's going to be the next one? I like this one. Um, but yeah, so outside of that, I do, I did do some things, uh, kind of like with like Firefox, right? So this right here is custom CSS. Um, it's called frame UI. I have this right here. This is the page for it. You, uh, download the CSS and then basically you can be like, uh, what is it going to be uh, about config, right? And then in here, you're going to look up style sheets. And it's going to be this last one. Uh, toolkit, legacy user profile, customization, style sheets, true. You want to, it's going to be false. You want to switch that to true. And then if we come in here, um, what is it? no, it's not config. It's about profiles. Uh, this first one is the root one. This is like going to be usually what your default profile is on Firefox. If you open this directory right here, um, let me just like move this here. Basically, uh, if you go to Chrome, this is where it lives. So you can put it in there and then you can also edit, edit this. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know, just pop it open in this. So this is totally editable if you want to come in here and change it. I'm just using it the way it is. It, I think it looks pretty good. Um, yeah. Firefox, CSS, pretty useful. And then the other one that's obvious, you've probably seen as I've been switching, is I got this CSS for Vestop. So with Vestop, if you go in here and you go to themes, and you can click here, better Discord, right? Did this open? Hold on, maybe if I open one right here right basically <clears throat> you come in here system 24 right and this is the theme now if i uh go right here this uh system 24 theme i came in here and i edited this and yeah so i could get this kind of look that matches everything you know the 70 percent opacity black and yeah, and so, you know, it, it looks good. It works good. I would, the, whatchamacallit, Omni menu or whatever you want to, you know, how I jump around and in, in, into stuff. It, it works very good. Uh, yeah. And that's about it. That's all the updates I made on my i3 configuration. I'm not like posting it anywhere per se, but if anybody has any questions on how to like get things or do things, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, yeah, maybe uh, one day I'll be like a responsible uh, Linux user and I will utilize GitHub more often. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I really appreciate you guys watching the video. If you got this far, um, please like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things. And uh, I'll check you guys in the next one. Peace out.